Hello and happy Independence Day in the United States of America. It's the 4th of July, a national holiday. And recently I had a special episode up on July 1st for Canada Day. And although I have many friends in Canada, many lovely brothers and sisters in Christ, and have often visited and really like that country very much, I'm a citizen of the United States. So I thought it would be appropriate to do something in keeping with the 4th of July. And so I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. And this is less about nationalism than it is about an illustration of something we see in Scripture. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Now, of course, in context, we're talking about the nation of Israel. And this is what God had prophesied to Abraham more than four centuries earlier in Genesis 15, when he told them that Abraham's descendants were going to go down into Egypt and be enslaved, and that after 400 years, they were going to come again to the land that the Lord gave. 430 years, I believe, is the total time period. But in any case, we come to see now in the Exodus the great deliverance that the Lord was going to bring about for them. And it's always fascinating, we concentrate perhaps on the exodus. The exodus means the way out. If you ever fly Olympic Airlines, the Greek airline, the exit signs over the doors of the airplane say exodus. It always makes me laugh when I see that because it makes me think of the Bible book. And it just means way out. So this is the way out of Egypt, the way out of bondage, the way out of slavery. And it, of course, was more than just a temporal deliverance. God was delivering them from physical chains and physical bondage. But the Lord also wanted to be their God and to deliver them from spiritual chains and spiritual bondage. And in that sense, that's a theme that runs right the way through the Bible, all the way to the last book of the Bible, the book of the Revelation. That the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is about redemption. It's about the price that has been paid to deliver us and to free us from the chains of guilt and sin, to free us from the wrath, the righteous anger of God against sin, that judgment that each of us deserves, and to deliver us not only from that, but also to deliver us unto something else. Because more than just saying, let my people go, that they uh, may be a free people, so to speak, God says here, let my people go, that they may serve me. In other words, Exodus is about the way out, but others have pointed out that later we get into the book of Joshua and we get the story of the way in, the conquest, where God brings that people back to the land where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had been pilgrims, where they sojourned in tents and lived that nomadic lifestyle of the Bedouin. And they were living that because they were believing God's word, the promise that he was going to make Abraham's seed into a great nation and bless all nations of the earth. All nations would be blessed through that seed. And this not only speaks to everything God's done through Israel in giving them types and shadows and signs and symbols and even his word, the oracles of God, as Romans chapter 3 would call them, but also especially when we think of that one descendant, the seed that Galatians 3 speaks about, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the deliverer. My Redeemer, oh what beauties, in that lovely name appear, we often sing. So the Lord is the one who sets people free, who breaks the chains of canceled sin, another another hymn says. So the Lord Jesus is the one who has redeemed us, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, Ephesians 1, 7 says. Of course, that's written to believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. This sine qua non of salvation. If you're going to be saved, you've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to put your faith in him, trusting in him alone to save you. And he's able to save you. And in fact, he's the only one who can save you because he's the only one who has paid the right redemption price. He laid down his life in sacrifice, a life of infinite value because he was the son of God. And yet a human life because he was the son of man. The Messiah promised from God who would take on human flesh and be just like every other human being in every sense, except he was without sin. He was, of course, unique, God with us, Emmanuel, as the Bible calls him. 
Now, not only was it the way out, but it was the way in to the land. And the point of the land, of course, was that it was an inheritance from God so that they might serve God. Just like the Lord through Moses here tells Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. And so it's very important to note that the point is there's a way out to a way in that leads to a way of life. We are redeemed or saved from sin, not to do our own thing, but redeemed to a new life of walking with the Lord, a new life of knowing him. The Lord Jesus defined eternal life as relational. He said, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, John 17, 3. So on a holiday where people all over the United States will celebrate and be thankful for a uh, land of freedom, and we will talk about liberty and independence and not being under the yoke of tyranny, all these kinds of uh, statements that are made. It makes me think of what Ben Franklin said uh, at the end of the Constitutional Convention in 1787 in Philadelphia. He was stopped by a prominent lady on the street, and she was asked, what sort of government do we have, a monarchy or a republic? And Franklin is supposed to have said, a republic, if you can keep it. And so there was the recognition that the American Revolution, this war for independence, had brought them out into a new state of being. They were now no longer colonies, but they were a united nation to now go about a different kind of course, a different kind of destiny. But what were they going to do with their freedom was the question. That's what Franklin was saying. How are you going to manage this government? Are you going to step up to the plate and be good citizens and do what the system demands? Or are you going to let this country go to ruin? Well, that was the question historically and politically for them. But we could ask the same question about salvation. That coming to the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved from judgment against sin, saved from hell, saved from the lake of fire ultimately, being saved unto heaven. Those are all tremendous byproducts of the gospel. Those are all things included in believing the good news. But the central factor is we are saved to know the Lord, saved to live for him, saved to serve him, saved to have his Holy Spirit indwell us and by his power to change and become like the Lord Jesus. So are we cooperating with the Lord? Are we letting the Lord have his way in our lives? Are we saying, Lord, here's my body, a living sacrifice. Use it how you see fit. Use me for your glory. Help me to serve you. And indeed, we've been brought out because we're going to be brought in. We've already been brought in in a sense. Positionally, the Lord looks at us and says, we have this inheritance. He already sees us as seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus, Ephesians says. In another sense, we're going there. First Peter 1 says that the inheritance is kept for us. It's unfading and it's incorruptible and it's glorious. And so that's there for us and we're going there. We're going to enjoy it in a fuller way once the Lord Jesus comes and transforms these bodies into glorious bodies like his body, as Philippians 3 puts it. So this Independence Day, I hope that you're free from sin through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you've put your faith in him and he saved you. And I hope that because he's raised you to walk in newness of life, that you're now walking with him daily, reading his word and praying, and putting yourself at his disposal for service. May God help each believer to do that. And if you're not a believer, I pray that today will be a real day of independence where you turn from your sin and bondage and cry out to the great liberator, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer himself, who became the redemption payment, who died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ while there's time. Thank you very much.